Hey there, welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about articulation development. Now, I think the most important thing is to know what syllable to say when you articulate. That's the first question I ask my students. What are you saying as you're, as you're playing? Trumpet players like to say ta or da, uh, but we low brassers, we like to and do. If you can do this with me, say ta, ta, and think about where your throat is and where your bottom jaw is, ta. Now say t, t, you can feel the tension here. Now say t, t, it's almost dull, but it's lower. Now say to, 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 you feel that resonance in your throat? Resonance is good. So we always say to. This is partly why I inhale and I say ho. So inhale is exhale is but that throat is open, that jaw is down, and the tongue is down, so the air is unencumbered. So say to. And then the other thing is don't chew when you play. If you're moving your whole jaw the whole time you are playing, you're disrupting the sound. So you can say to with the tongue. And you just flick the tip of it. And if you can imagine kind of a water, water coming out of a, of a hose. And all we're going to do is we're going to take our finger and just tap the air stream, or the water stream in this instance. If you put your whole finger over the garden hose, the water stops. And that's kind of what happens with our tuba playing. So the tongue is low, it goes up, it touches the air stream, and it comes back down. Now for a lot of people, this is that area on the roof of the mouth where there's skin and then the top of your teeth. A lot of people will tongue right there. And then when we get lower, sometimes we tend to tongue behind our teeth. And then at the very extreme low register, sometimes we tongue through our teeth. Almost like a snake. I do that in the pedal register. It really helps. Uh, but for normal tuba playing register, think toe. And think about where your tongue hits. And then as soon as your tongue goes up and touches, it needs to come back and get out of the way. Otherwise, it's going to negatively impact you're playing. This is the same for euphonium, exact same articulation. And generally what I teach is more air and less tongue. Oftentimes teachers will say tongue harder and that does not help the situation in any way. So be deliberate with your air, that helps. That will fix most things. Um, and then I like to use this in scale patterns to really tell if what I'm doing is working. So, the first exercise I want to do, this is another exercise out of the Brass Gym book by Sam Palafian and, and Patrick Sheridan. It's called Soft Touch. And all I'm going to do is a B-flat scale. It's quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter. And it's slow and it's soft. This is quarter equals 60. And I'm just trying to get the note to speak. To, 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 nice and relaxed. You can play it with me if you'd like. One, two, three. So what we're going for is consistency. You know, if you put this into a software program like Finale or Sibelius and you played it back, it would sound, every note would sound exactly the same from an articulation standpoint. Or if you played this on a piano, every note would have the same front to the note. And that's what we're really going for. So I will do this in as many keys as I can and as many different registers as I can, but I'm doing it kind of mezzo piano to piano just trying to make sure that it's nice and even. And if you feel like it's not even, try to do the breath pattern for this. Still thinking toe. And then while you're doing it, be mindful of how much air hits your hand. Is it consistent? And where is your tongue placement? Is that consistent? 
Those are the two most important things for articulation, is where we use the tongue, how aggressive we use it, and then the quality of our air. So, soft touch is great. You can also do other patterns. Uh, I do one called tongue coordination, and I use this one for tongue speed, because we oftentimes have to play things fast. Uh, so for this, it's an eighth, two sixteenths, an eighth, two sixteenths, and then eight sixteenth notes. But it's still a major scale on each note. So I'll do this one at about, I don't know, maybe 88. So you can hear what this sounds like. Again, we're going for that machine-like consistency. That's all that matters. One, two. So I imagine you have one of those blue books that we all get in band, or perhaps you have the Essential Elements book, but there are these band method books, and so there are all sorts of scale patterns uh, and exercises throughout them. Um, but if you start running out of ideas, the Brass Gym book is great. You can visit my website, www.tamuctuba.com. There's all sorts of exercises that I use with my students at Texas A&M Commerce. Um, but I think articulation is super important for us. We sit on the back row. Oftentimes we're behind the beat or we're unclear and we get called out for that. So be thinking toe and then when we're playing very soft lyrical things we might think do. It's a little softer front but it still keeps that jaw down and nice and open. Uh, it takes years and years of practice. You know, we train like athletes so we have to do a little bit every single day. Long tones, lip slurs, articulation exercises, this is all great stuff. Try not to take a mechanical approach to playing this. This is a musical instrument. So always be thinking musically. Be thinking musically when you're buzzing on the mouthpiece. We sing through the instrument. That's the most important thing to remember. And if you can't hear the pitch that you're trying to play, you're probably going to miss it. So do your homework. That may be singing through passages before you play them. It may be using a tuner or a piano app on a phone or a tablet that can help you really find the pitch. Uh, you're going to make some mistakes along the way, that's part of the process, um, but we learn from those and we improve. I hope you enjoy tuba and euphonium as much as I do. Happy practicing! <laughs>